God bless you out there, YouTube land, Google Plus land tonight. We got Pastor Mark Paris and Melinda tonight playing the piano. We're going to have church here, at least the Brother Church here in Pinkneville, Illinois today. It's February the 14th, 2015. This is our St. Valentine's love in Jesus Christ to you tonight. Here's some of the people here tonight. We're going to have church. Jesus is in the building. These people love the Lord here tonight. the best hand clap to save you Messiah of the world. Praise your holy name. Amen. Melinda, pop and popcorn on the pen over here. I think you might ready to get wrapped away go through the roof there. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this song here is called, We're Gonna Worship the King. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. So, yeah. Praise along with this. It's a good Just take your shoes off and praise the Lord. Amen. 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 You're a bunch of holy rollers, it's time to roll down on the floor. Here it is. Here's your chance.
is King Jesus, King of King and Lord of Lords, the Alpha Omega, beginning and the first and last. Worship King Jesus, King of King and Lord of Lords. Amen. Melinda's making her talk over there. Amen, Jesus. They don't bless you, bless you, your blessings broke. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Some you can sing and some you can't sing and some you belong and sing. Say, <laughs> oh boy, you say. Amen. Amen. How great is our God. Give Jesus the best hand clap. Give Melinda for praising God a good hand clap in Jesus' holy name. We're going to just have church tonight. Jesus is in the building. We're going to have church here, man. I've been preaching 30 years, and one thing for certain, Jesus is returning soon. To just about over with here. We have a video here. We'll travel here. we got a chair here, one of these easy chairs. Give Mark the best hand clap in Jesus' holy name. You would, if you brought your Bibles, go with me to the book of Matthew. Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 22 is where we're going to start. <laughs> the Lord started dealing with me on this message. He actually had a part of it preached at our church. And uh, it started out with, I was praying about some things that were going on and felt like the Lord said he was tired of his people getting run over. Tired of his people getting run over. Uh, we quote scriptures about he will supply our needs according to his riches and glory. By his stripes we are healed. We have all these little scriptures, but when you look around, his people are getting beat up. And he, he starts sharing with me, when we read these scriptures, we got to do more with them than just read them. we got to live them. we got to stand on them. Um, it's so important that each and every person read their Bible for themselves. Um, it's hard to stand on something when you don't, you've never read a scripture to do it. Um, it's so important to stay in your word. And he does promise us all of those things, and he will come through if we if we will do what we're supposed to do. We'll start with uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. It says, Master, which is the great commandment of the law, the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets he's talking about here, if you remember on the Mount of Transfiguration, when Moses was there, Elijah was there, and Jesus was there, that's when this was being put together way back then. Moses represented the law, Elijah represented the prophets, Jesus represented the new covenant that he was bringing in. That's why they were all three there. That was everything coming down. Now we have this, and whenever we start moving in this, everybody talks about, well, what about the Ten Commandments? If we love Him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and we love our neighbor as the same, you won't want to commit adultery. You won't want to hurt your neighbor. You won't want to steal. You won't want to do those things. So yes, these two will cover the ten. And we got to remember, we're not under the law, but he left two commandments that we're supposed to walk in and fulfill. And a lot of the times we say we do, but when the Lord starts showing me this, he says, do you really? And I was like, Lord, I hope so, you know. And uh, right off the bat, he took and put a name in my head of somebody years ago that we had had a little bout, and uh, basically it become an out of sight, out of mind type forgiveness. And he said, stop and think back. If you've truly forgiven that person, truly forgiven them, and walking in this love that he's talking about here, this is an agape love, if you've truly done that, would you invite that person over to supper? Would you sit down and eat with them? And I thought, no. No, Lord, I would. And he says, you've not forgiven them. See, we got to get this stuff under the blood, or we can't expect him, if we're not doing our part, to do his part. He only left his two commandments now. That's all we got to do. But we have a hard time with those because of the way the world is. You know, everybody's beating on everybody. Everybody's looking out for themselves. Well, if you remember, we're supposed to be the light. We're supposed to be the light. Every time somebody sees us, we're supposed to be showing Christ. And if I don't forgive somebody or don't walk in forgiveness, what's that going to show them? What does it show them? When we stop back and take a look at our lives and what's going on, and, and like I said, Satan is just ripping on people right now. And he said, you've got to get this before we can go into the other. Because if we got to remember, when, you, when it all gets broke down, the Bible tells us God is love. So if I don't walk in love, how will I ever know Him? If He's love, 
And each and every one of us have the same walk. It says to work out your own salvation, but do it with fear and trembling. Not that you're supposed to be uh, that afraid of God, because He is love, but the reverence is what He's talking about there. And He gives us, like I said, we're going to go through quickly, um, for time's sake, we're going to go through some of the stuff that we got to have, we got to walk in. But it all starts with this love walk. If you don't have a love walk, you're not going to get anywhere in, the, in what we're about to go into. The love walk is the most, that's probably the deepest part of God you'll ever get in. The deepest part. And so many times we sit there and wait and wonder why this don't work, and I won't talk to my neighbor. I won't talk to somebody that done me wrong. And then I wonder why these things don't work. We blame it on Satan. I remember one time I was running late for church and uh, jumped in and went to jump in the shower and, and jammed my toe on the side of the tub. So I get in the shower and I'm like, oh, man, I rebuke you, Satan, and all this, you know. And the Lord stopped me and said, Satan didn't do that. He said, you was in a hurry, wasn't paying attention. Satan didn't know. We make Satan look like this big old enemy. we got to remember he's a defeated foe. The Lord made a public defeat out of him, and we give him this credit, well, Satan made me do it. Satan cannot make a Christian or a child of God do anything. Anything. He has no no control over us, no authority over us. That was stripped from him. He has authority down here on earth over non-believers. He just tears them up. But if we'll walk in this love and stand on the, on the promises he gives us, do everything like he says to do, he can't touch us. He can't touch us. We're children of the light, is what the word says. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 10. verse 1. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. There's the love being shown already. Who in presence am base among you, but be an absent and bold towards you. But I beseech you that I may, may not be bold when I'm present with the confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. You've got to remember, there's the flesh man. It's a flesh man he's talking about. We were born into a sinful nature. Um, the desires, the, uh, the things that we want to do, they feel good. They look good. Those are the things he's talking about. We don't walk after the flesh no more. Remember, Paul, Paul says, I crucify the flesh daily. Daily. And we, we, we're afraid to tell people if we're weak in an area or something like that. Well, I don't want to say nothing. They'll think I'm not a good Christian. And then we end up falling. See, we're supposed to be walking in love where our brother or sister say, Brother, I'll pray for you. I'll help you up. Don't worry about it. We'll, be, we'll get through this, but we don't do that. And this is what he's talking about, the, the flesh, when he's talking about it. Casting down, or go up from, down to verse 4. <coughs> For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Verse 4 again, he says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. They're not flesh and blood. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and powers. Okay? But yet, if somebody comes against us, what do we do? We get defensive. We come against that person. The person is just being driven by Satan. We need to go and attack the root in the spirit realm with prayer. That's why if you, if you start walking this out, you'll find out 
Prayer is the most powerful thing you can ever do. Your prayer walk, man, you ought to guard that, take care of it, spend time with it. That's how you get to know God. That's how you get direction. And that's how you defeat the enemy. Most people, they want, they don't want a prayer time. Uh, man, Melinda was talking about it the other day. She said she remembered a time when she'd be praying and then the phone would ring and she'd be she'd crack one eye open to see who it was. You know, get the phone out of there. Get the phone out of there. This is you and your Savior's time. This should be the most intimate time you ever spend with God in your prayer closet. If you don't have a prayer closet, you need to get one. That's where your victory will come from. But he's telling us here, the flesh and blood, when we argue with people, when we when we hold something against somebody, that ain't where the problem is. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. It, it's, it's, it's Satan and his enemy. you got to remember, everything that we walk in, that we see, that we do, was made by God. Everything. Uh, Non-believers might put a different name to it, and that's okay. We know for a fact, the Bible tells us, everything was made by God. Music, it started out, praise and worship with God. Satan, all, Satan can't, he, he can't make nothing, he can't think of something. What he does is take what God makes and takes it over here and just destroys it. Or makes it where it will destroy them. That's all he can do is take what he sees God make and he tries to pervert it somehow. That's why you get the rock and roll that, that actually want people killing themselves, talk about all that and everything. It started out praising worship for Christ. For God. Same way I, I see a lot of people with uh, the karma thing. The non-believers say, well, you know, karma. No, no, no. Back up. God, this whole book is based on seed time and harvest. What we sow, we'll reap. The, the non-believers don't want to admit because they see it work in their lives. Well, they don't want to admit it's God. So what they do is they give it a name, a name karma. If they call it whatever they want. It's seed time and harvest. It was put into place from the beginning of time. God's word is God's word. They can call it whatever they want. Let them go. You know better. You know better. Go with me now to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. This is, he breaks it down pretty good here. Uh, Definitely study this out when you've got more time at home. The scriptures I'm giving you um, are just kind of like a rock skipping across a pond. <laughs> study them out, write them down, take a look at it when you get home. This is where your, your victories will come from because this is where your battles are. Ephesians 6, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Because we're supposed to be walking in the Lord. Remember when he said when you got saved. And started your love walk with him. He says I'll make an abode with you. I'll come and live with you. And you'll live with me. Like Jesus was with God. We are with him. So, so now we're supposed to be walking in his power. In his might. Inside of me. That's what a lot of people, they, they're, we, like I said at the beginning, we quote them scriptures, but we have a hard time believing them when it comes to the supernatural because we can't see it. That's what the faith walk is. That's what we got to truly believe his word and believe when I pray about something or I cast it down that it's going to happen. That it's going to happen. And... This is what he's going to break down for us in here. He's going to tell us how, what, what we're supposed to be doing. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And when we read through this, a lot of times you hear this preached, and, and everything we come against is Satan. 
But we got to remember, Satan wasn't the only person thrown out of heaven. A bunch of his angels got thrown out of heaven. And as God has archangels, guardian angels, all this, remember, Satan can't make, he perverts. So he has different levels of his angels. He has his head angel. He has, and if you'll, if you'll pay attention when we go down through here, this is, everything he calls out is plural. He's telling us there's more than one enemy that you're going to fight. It ain't just Satan. you got his enemies or his little imps or whatever you want to call them running around also. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality and powers, against rulers, plural, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Now these are things that we cannot fight with carnal weapons. You're not gonna you're not gonna take a gun and shoot one of these. It, it just ain't gonna happen. This is your gun. This is your sword. That's why it's so important when it when it tells us tells us how to how to arm ourselves or or put all this armor on. It's so important you do it because what he's telling you is I promise you they're gonna come after you. Satan's whole, his whole thing, we know, kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he's, that's what he wants to do. That's his job. And he's good at it. you got to remember, he's been around. He was around when this was being written. A lot of people think they're going to outsmart him. He knows this Bible better than we do. That's why we walk in faith and we draw off the power of God, which nothing can stand against. Nothing. If we'll step up and walk in it, we will come out victorious. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Stand don't mean just quit, lock up, go down into the fetal position. Stand means keep doing what you're doing, but count on God to take you. If you come up against a wall or a door or whatever, and you don't just stop. You just start, you, That's when you go into your prayer closet. God will open it in front of you. God always stays one step ahead of us. But we got to remember too, he says, your steps were ordered. You already, each and every one of us, have a ministry of some sort. Whether we move in it or not, it's up to us. When I get up around Judgment Day, he's going to say, okay, Mark, I called you to preach. What did you do? Each and every one of us. When we got saved, what... And he left, what did he tell everybody? Go ye into all the world and preach. Go ye into all the world. He was talking to everybody. There's going to be people that I can't touch that you can. There's going to be people that he can't touch that you can. Each and every one of us have a way with a certain a certain clan of people. And we, we, we waited so long for the preacher to touch them that we missed it. Because a preacher can only touch so many. Only touch so many. And I, I, like I tell them in our church, in here, praise God, I hope everybody's saved. Our, our ministry is when we go out that door out there. That's a lost and dying world that needs all of us working to further the kingdom. Not waiting on one guy. Those days are gone. You know? Uh, thank God that God called me to preach, but my job is out there. Amen. When I come in here, yeah, my job is to hopefully teach, move us forward. When I get out there, I'm just like, I'm supposed to hit the streets. Amen. I'm supposed to lead these people to Jesus. And I tell you what, I, I, I see so much, me and my wife, so many people, we, we tell them that, and they say, well, if I knew more scripture, I'm telling you right now, when I go out witnessing, and I've, I've led a lot of people to the Lord, thank God, He's used me. And, and, and nine times out of ten, very little scripture is shared. Very little. Usually, it's it's at the very end when I when I'm sharing what Jesus did when He went to the cross, and He died for our sins, and rose three days later. That's when I bring the scriptures into it. We 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 think we got to be these Bible scholars to witness to people. When the Bible clearly states it's locked to the non-believer. 
So why do we start throwing it at them? <laughs> They're not going to understand it until they become believers, and then it's unlocked to them. So your testimony, how God helped you, that's what wins people in. Because they're going through life with no hope. Everything's going wrong. And they see you and go, wow, how did he get it? He ain't struggling like I am. That's, he says you're overcomer by your testimony. What he done for me. The people I've led to the Lord, it's usually, how did, Mark, I knew you as an alcoholic. I knew you was on crystal meth. I knew, what? how did that happen? And it's like, let me tell you. Jesus. You know, and, and you get to share that with them. That gives them hope. That gives them that mustard seed faith that will allow them to have faith enough to believe he died for them also. But so many times we think, well, i got to know the whole Bible backwards and frontwards. I don't have it memorized. But I'm not afraid to witness to somebody. Because it's not us. It's the Holy Spirit in us. So many times we, we all, well, I, 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 we need to lay I down. He says the Holy Spirit will go before you and come, he'll woo a man. He'll touch their heart. He'll, he'll loosen that heart up. And then we'll come and do our job. But the Holy Spirit will be out in front of you and help you and guide you. And therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, that, that is a key. There's a reason. We always group all this stuff together. Now, he, may, he separates this. He says, above all of what I just told you, above all, taking the shield of faith, you got to have faith. The only way you're going to get faith is you'll keep renewing your mind daily in His Word. you got to you got to surround yourself with believers. I, I, I know a couple people that I've dealt with here recently. Uh, yeah, but i still got some friends in the bar. I don't drink, though. I just go and have a soda. Guess what? A couple months went by, and they drink now. <laughs> they drink now. They didn't at the beginning, but they do now. It's just safe for Dre. He, he's, he'll take all the time he needs. It is weighing on you to keep sliding, keep sliding, then he'll slide it in. His greatest move is one we don't even realize he did. We don't even know it until it's too late. And these people sit there and think, man, we've got to surround ourselves with believers and brothers and sisters that will encourage us, lift us up. But yet, we, we're too busy. We don't have time. We should never be too busy for our, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We should be there. We should be the one that you can count on. That's the only way it's going to happen. Then it says that you'll be able to quench all. That's a, that is such an awesome word. I love that when he said all the fiery darts. In other words, I don't care what Satan throws at you. No matter. Call it what you want. You'll be able to withstand all of them. Every single thing he throws at you, when you get into Christ, that's the only way we can become complete. Same way with love. There's, there's, there's only two really things that I've seen in the Bible that we can be complete in. Love's one of them. Through the Holy Spirit, he says, our love will be perfected. And then he, here we're getting ready to go into a place where he tells us we can be complete in Christ. We can be complete. And that's pretty big. Whenever you fought and battled and nothing has worked, you're still getting your light shut off, your water shut off. Whenever that's happening, I hear so many people tell me, well, God's trying to teach me something. That's garbage. Come on, your light's not shut off. What's he trying to teach you? Your flashlight? <laughs> you know, if I'm supposed to minister to people and witness to them, how am I, how am I going to get them believing he will supply all their needs when I don't even have lights. Everybody's afraid to talk about finances or money in the Bible and all that. You need it. <laughs> you need it. You shouldn't have to. If you're serving God, you shouldn't have to worry about a red notice. You shouldn't have to. He says, I'll supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I praise God for that. 
when he told me that, he told me, just read that scripture again, read it again, read it again, because I was praying, Lord, I, you know, I don't want much, but I, I would like to have a nice house and some nice vehicles. He said, I'll bless you according to my riches and glory. I said, praise God, I'd love to have it. He said, listen to what you're saying. He said, I'll bless you according to mine. He got streets of gold. Stuff we don't even, we can't even imagine. And he says, I'll, I'll, I'll bless you according to my riches. In other words, Mark, that's when he tells us in the Old Testament, I'll, I'll, I'll open the window of heaven, pour down a blessing you can't contain. Man, I can tell you right now, I can contain a lot. So that's got to be big. <laughs> you know, if I, if I can't contain, i got a truck. I'll haul in the truck. You know, just come on, Lord, you know. And that's the way we should be looking at it. Not, he's trying to teach me something, so i got to sit in the dark. That's garbage. Garbage. Our God is awesome. He said, I come to give you life and life more abundant. In other words, take you to places you couldn't get. That's what I'm looking for. If I could get to here, I think where Christ could take me. I think where he could take me. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is what kills the enemy. This is what stops the enemy in his tracks. He cannot fight this. Amen. Cannot fight it. That's why I tell everybody at our church, raise your Bible up. They don't. Used to, I used to do it, and it, it, oh, it just tore them up. They come to me after church, and it's like, well, you know, I'm learning from you, and it's like, what if I deceive you? God forbid I ever lead somebody astray. You need your own Bible, though. Amen. You read it for yourself. Because when it comes to Judgment Day, I'm not going to be standing with you. When I get to Judgment Day, whoever taught me ain't going to be standing with me. I can't go up there and say, well, George told me. <laughs> He's going to say, well, too bad you had a Bible, didn't you? It's my responsibility. He says, work out your own salvation. George ain't got nothing to do with my walk. Nothing. My wife don't have nothing to do with my walk. So many times I hear, I hear that a lot too. Well, my wife, she don't want to go to church. See, leave her at home. Go. Because you're going to stand in front of Christ and your wife ain't going to be with you either. Nothing should be between you and God. Nothing. I've learned real quick, a long time ago, usually anything I put in front of him, I usually end up losing it. He'll take it away from me. He says he's a jealous God. So I've none before him. None. And we got to remember this stuff because even though we're walking in love, God is love, God won't be mocked. He's all power. He's all authority. He is awesome. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto, we all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. People, if, if you're not seeing what you've been praying for or something God has showed you, you don't give up, you don't quit praying about it, you keep taking it to the throne room. People, I, I, man, when I, they about had me backslid. When I first got into church, the preacher told me, you know what, God can hear you. He heard you the first time. You don't need to keep repeating it. Yeah, you do. The Bible says you do. The Bible says you do. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, three times prayed if there be any other way. And if, it, if Jesus had to pray about it three times, it's going to take more than that for me. That's the way I look at it. You know, yeah. I just keep beat, I just keep beating heaven with it. Lord, I ain't seen it yet, but I believe you'll do it. He's not bound by, by our tears. You can get up here and you can spend two days bawling and squalling, but he is bound by his word. He cannot lie. He says, I'll supply your needs. He'll supply them. If he says he'll heal you, he'll heal you. Amen. But so many times, if we don't see it right now, we give up on it. Don't give up on it. Go back to the throne room. Lord, I still need you. I still need you. So we, we've been giving up too easy, and Satan is just beating us up, and God's saying, I need I need a group that'll stand up. These last days, Revelation, he tells us it's going to be bad. It's going to get rough. He can't have Mamby Bambi preachers and, and people of God. He needs people that will stand and not be moved. Not be moved. Go with me to Colossians. We're going to finish with this. 
Colossians chapter 2. Like I said, this is just a man study these out that we went to. It will bring you victory. Oh my gosh. Your battles will get so much easier when you know this book says this. What's happened is for, for too long, this world has delegated, this is what you are. This is where you belong. Only thing should tell us who we are is this. When it says I'm the head, not the tail, I'm the head, not the tail. When it says I'm above, not beneath, I'm above. I ain't beneath. We don't, we don't need to let them tell us what they think. We know what we are in Christ. We have proof right here. Colossians 2. <clears throat> Start with verse 1. For I would that you knew the great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. And unto all riches of the full assurance and understanding to the acknowledgement for the mysteries of God and for the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, which they're right here. We have them. We have them. <laughs> and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. It's happening, people. It's happening all over the place. We got preachers preaching it, telling them, you know, we don't want to offend them, so we don't tell them come up front. Well, buddy, I tell you what, on Judgment Day, God's going to go come here. If they can, in a room full of believers, if they are too embarrassed to come up, how are they going to stand in a world that's going to chew them up? How is it going to happen? They're going to get, they're going to get beat to death. And I say this, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ, as ye have therefore received Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Walk ye in him. This word is telling us I can walk in Christ daily. Walk in Him daily. And if I'm walking in Him, I'm telling you, i got to be walking in love. If I'm not walking in love, I'm not walking in Christ. It just don't work. I've tried to find a shortcut. Guess what? There ain't no shortcuts. You're going to love them or you're not. And one day we'll get in front of God and we're going to go, He's going to go, Well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, worker of iniquity. Amen. We, there's going to be, with God, it's black or it's white. There is no gray area. Yeah. As ye have therefore received Christ in, in the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, that the tradition of man and rudiments of the world and not after Christ, for in him dwelleth, in him dwelleth all the fullness of Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and powers. God made a mockery of him. You stripped Satan of all his power all his authority. He has no right messing with you. He has no right. You're Christ. You were bought with for you were bought with a, a oh what a price. What a price. For him to give his son for each and every one of us. For him to reach down and grab me when I was running from him. And he still said, Come on, Mark, I love you. I love you. He's waiting for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. All you got to do is step up and say, I want everything, God. I'm, I'm still battling this. I'm not getting I'm not getting victory in this area. 
whatever it may be. You might be his, but the Satan's been beating you down. Well, you see tonight, he has no right to you. The victory's yours. It's yours. All we got to do is start walking in love and having faith when we read this stuff. It's true. If I'm complete in Christ, complete's like a basketball. There, it, it don't. It's not going to become anything else. It is what it is. If I'm complete in Christ, I'm not lacking nothing. I have everything or I would not be complete. Basketball's got an outside, it's got air. If it don't have one or the other, it ain't complete. If we're complete in Him, we have everything. You can have it tonight. We're going to stop there. I want to open up the altars. You know what? You might be saved. Praise God. If you're not, come down. We'll pray with you. We can take care of that. You might be saved, but sitting back going, I, I keep battling and I'm not getting victory. I keep battling. I have a daughter. I have I have a friend that's sick, and I just they just can't get victory. Come down here. We'll pray for you. We'll stand in agreement with you. That's what we're supposed to do as brothers and sisters in Christ. We're supposed to be there one for another. Because I tell you what, there's been times when, when I've just felt I don't I didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to pray. I just started crying out, Lord, I need you to do something. I need you to do something. You don't have to worry about pretty prayers or anything else. He, he hears your heart. Your heart will talk. He hears your heart. So the altars are open. If you need prayer, come down here. We'll pray for you. And, and, and like I said, it don't necessarily need to be salvation. I will pray for you anything. We don't care. Come down here. and We'll, we'll get this stuff clear up. And you'll start walking in victory. That's what it's all about. So the altars are open.